Nicole, Sokaku, and Lucy are the three A rank support characters available in Zenless Zone Zero at launch. Technically speaking, Rina is also another support character, but she's an S rank, so we're going to exclude her for today's discussion. Now, a lot of the teams that have become popularized all revolve around the concept of a main DPS, a sub DPS, and a support character. The most common examples are the premium ice team of Ellen, Lycan, and Sokaku, or Soldier 11, Piper, and Lucy. But what about Nicole? Is she just just that bad that no one wants to use her? I would actually like to argue that she is actually one of the better support units out of the batch of three. And so today's video is going to be showing you why I think Nicole deserves your investment. Firstly, she's got two big reasons, but uh, we'll get into some other reasons as well. First off, let's talk about the team passives. Now as supports, their team passives don't really offer much to improve their own damage. It's more for improving the team's damage as you know, they are a support. Take for example, Sokaku, who is able to increase the damage of ice type characters characters when paired with another ice type unit. This is a big reason as to why the mono ice team is so popular. Likewise, we have Lucy who her passive isn't that much buffing, but it's just a nice form of extra damage in that her little boars can also inherit her crit rate and crit damage. And again, in order to do this, you need either another Sons of Caledon unit, which is the Piper, or another fire type unit, which is Soldier 11. Again, perfect team synergy. However, we get to Nicole after that. Right now, there are no other Aether units available at launch, which means that you can only activate her passive if you use another Cunning Hair member. The issue though is that if you do activate her passive, what that does is it increases your Aether damage which again, only she can do right now and not even that well because again, she's a support unit. So Nicole's team passive is essentially a non-factor. Definitely, I think Sokaku right now wins in terms of who has the best team passive. But in a little under a week from now, Zuyan will be releasing who is an Aether attack unit, which means that Nicole will become a lot more viable because one, she will actually be able to use her passive to increase Zuyan's damage and two, being a support and Aether type unit herself, she can also trigger in turn Zhu Yan's passive ability. Moving on from that though, let's look at their buffs that they provide to the team. So Kaku and Lucy both provide the team an attack buff, whereas Nicole provides a defense shred to an enemy that she hits. Lucy's is a team-wide attack buff, although it is a much lower with a value of 600 as the cap. So Kaku can provide one specific character up to a 1000 attack bonus. Once again, immediately, Sokaku is probably your go-to because you can funnel a lot more damage into one main DPS and have them be that hyper carry. Whereas with Lucy, splitting your damage across multiple characters, it's good, but that is of course assuming that both of your other two characters want to do a lot of DPS. Now, I think a lot of people are getting very blindsided by the fact that the game is still fairly brand new. And so this flat attack buff is a lot more impactful than it might seem. Because when you're at early levels, your total attack stats are a lot lower. So if you were to give yourself an extra 100 attack bonus when you only have 500, that sounds a lot more appealing than late game where say you already have 5,000 attack and now adding a maximum of 600, it doesn't seem as big of a difference now or as big of a percentage increase. So this means though that at the start of the game, yes, this flat attack bonus does seem very nice, but as we progress later and later into the game and our units are more built, this will have diminishing returns. Now, if we move over to Nicole's buff, or rather her debuff that she provides. She lowers the enemy's defense by a percentage amount. Now again, because of the fact that we are in an early game, all numbers are much lower than they would be typically at the end game. This goes for not only our attack, but also the enemy's defense. So if hypothetically speaking, an enemy were to have 100 defense and you shred 40% of it, that's 40 defense points that you are removing. If they have 1000 defense points and you are reducing that by 40%, that is 400 defense points that you are now removing which is a significantly better scaling effect. I would also like to point out though, Nicole's defense shred, which is a percentage, is technically speaking almost as good as Rina's penetration buff that she provides to the team. And reminder, Rina is an S rank support unit. So Nicole has the equivalent of an S rank buff. Now, of course, this is balanced by the fact that Nicole's defense shred is on a much shorter duration. So you will be needing to tag her in and out very, very often. But the nice thing is that her EX skill can actually linger for quite a while, allowing you to get a lot more than 3.5 seconds of damage in with that defense shred. Right now, people are pigeonholing, I think, on the other two because of the synergy with the strong options currently available, such as Piper and Ellen. But Nicole offers so much just by herself 
even ignoring that team synergy. So once Zhu Yan comes out, it'll get even better. So I think you should definitely look into investing in Nicole sooner rather than later. Now looking at these EX skills, I think Lucy is definitely the harshest because her EX skill is literally just an extra source of damage. Whereas Sokaku and Nicole both allow you to group up enemies with their skills. And again, since they are all support characters, these all allow for quick assists into your next character. So grouping up all of the enemies before switching into your DPS to damage them all at once is a very valuable option. The issue though is that when comparing Sokaku and Nicole, Sokaku takes very long to do her spin and fly the flag motion in order to get that attack bonus buff to transfer to the next character. Nicole, however, can very easily switch in to use her skill and then have the teammate come in or even even just regular basic attack. Speaking of the ease of getting the buff or the debuff in, for Lucy, yes, she does give attack to the whole team, which is very nice, but she needs to either use an EX skill, so not even just a regular skill, or you have to have her at cinema 2 and then get a chain attack, so a stun essentially. This is a much higher requirement, and even then, it will only last 10 seconds or 15 seconds if you use a fully charged EX skill with the fly hit. So Kaku, on the other hand, has it a bit nicer in which all you have to do is hold down her skill and you can have the buff for 20 seconds or 30 if you have her cinema. But again, it does take time for her to do the actual animation. Nicole, however, you just have to attack them, not even with the skill. Her basic attack bullets also work. Now, of course, to compensate for this, the uptime is significantly lower. So if you're using basic attacks, it won't last that long. However, if you have Nicole at cinema one, if you're using her skill, since the black hole lingers for a while, depending on how long you charge it, you can get a lot more time out of that defensive shred. There is the base EX skill, which lasts for for a little bit, then there is the hold EX skill which lasts even longer, and if you want to have it last even longer, if you input a 360 motion while you are charging her EX skill, Nicole will charge up even longer and extend the duration of her black hole. Now, for their weapons, or their wengeons, I guess if you want to call them that, specifically their signatures, this is a big separator of the three. For Sokaku, her bashful demon increases her ice damage, which is always nice. The other effect though is that when launching an EX special attack, all squad members increase their attack by 2% up to 3.2% uh, for 12 seconds, stacking up to four times. So that's either eight or up to about 12.8% attack boost. The issue is this makes her want to use her EX special a lot, basically turning her into a sort of pseudo DPS, which again, if you look at her cinema, it really tries to make Sokaku a form of DPS as if they know that you didn't get Ellen during your roles. And her EX skill is already quite long. So spending a lot of time to stack that up means that there's less time for your actual DPS to do damage on the field, which isn't that great. Now, looking at Lucy's Wenjin, it states that when any friendly unit in the squad attacks and hits an enemy, all squad members' attack increases by 2.5% or up to 4%, stacking up to 4 times. So that is anywhere between 10 and 16% attack increase. Now, technically speaking, each unit can only provide one stack of the buff. So I think what this means is that her little pigs can also contribute to that. So this is a nice Wenjin, right? It's a very easy way to proc extra damage for the entire team. And looking at Lucy's cinema mindscapes, she is definitely a more supportive character than Sokaku, as all of her mindscapes are about the cheer on effect and her bores, things that do not rely on her being on the field. But again, the only issue with Lucy is that you do kind of need her at Cinema 2 to actually make use of her or to get her buff out consistently. However, if we look over at Nicole, that is where you see a true support through and through. First, let's look at her Wenjin, The Vault. This states that whenever you do any ether damage using an EX special attack, a chain attack, or an ultimate, it increases all squad members damage against that target by 15% up to 24% at max rank. And also it increases the equipper's energy regen. This is an absolutely amazing Wenjin, not only for Nicole, but honestly for any ether type support unit in the future. Instead of being a percentage attack increase, it is a percentage damage bonus, which is much more impactful. And also you get the energy regen. And also Lucy's isn't as universal because of the fact that even though it can stack up to four times, each unit can only contribute one stack. So you basically have to have Lucy and her little piggies to get those max stacks. And then don't even get me started on Nicole's mindscapes. They are, again, all based around support. Her first mindscape is it allows her to extend the duration of her black hole EX special, which again is essentially an extension on the defense shred as well as the damage bonus from her signature Wenjin. Her M2 is more energy regen, so allowing her to spam her EX more often. Her M4 increases the size of black hole, which means more better grouping of enemies. And her M6 gives her entire team crit rate whenever she does damage with that EX skill. Like, it is so simple and easy to build Nicole. She, all she has 
has to do is just come in, choose, use an EX skill and hop out. And then she is contributing the maximum amount possible. She's contributing a defense shred, a damage increase, a crit rate increase and grouping enemies, right? Don't get me wrong, the others are great as well, but the issues are that Sokaku has to spend a lot of time on the field because of how long her animations are. And some of her cinema mindscapes are slightly more self-centered. Lucy, on the other hand, is very good in that she can stay off field a lot, but the uptime on her buff is a little bit dicier because you will rely on EX skill or chain attacks. And to make good usage out of her cinema mindscapes, you do actually need to invest in her damage so that her boars can do damage off field. Not that that's a bad thing, but again, Nicole is just so simple, so good that I think a lot of people are overlooking her right now, purely because of the fact that we do not have a ether type character to go with her. But hopefully though, me showing you all of these beautiful things that Nicole has can tempt you that even if you don't build Zuyan, Nicole is a perfectly good support even if you don't have another ether type unit to go with her. So if for whatever reason you want to skip on Zuyan or you fail to get Zuyan, don't doubt on Nicole. She is perfectly good as is and she is definitely usable in any team. She might seem like a bit of a girl failure in the story, but she is definitely a girl boss when it matters in battle. But yeah, if you did find this video helpful, as always, liking, commenting, and subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Otherwise, that is going to be it for me. So until next time, bye-bye.